Hi everyone, my name is Abhi Sudarshana and I'm a first year biomedical engineering master's student at UC Irvine and I recently just joined the uh, research fellowship here about two weeks ago so I'm excited to be here and learn uh, more about bioinformatics. So today I'll be going over a course that I finished called TCA biomedical data visualization in R, um, specifically for RNA sequencing. So I'll be going over that. So first of all, as an introduction, um, RNA sequencing is basically obtaining the genetic sequence of RNA transcripts, um, which tells you about the gene expression. So this basically tells you what genes are being expressed at a particular point in time in a cell. So RNA sequencing is used to understand um, different cell types, and it can tell you at what level genes are being expressed in cells, whether lower or higher expression. And that can tell you about the phenotype aspects about cells and different cell states. And we can identify um, <clears throat> characteristic gene expression patterns for specific cell types and cell states. So that's why RNA sequencing is important. And typically um, the sequencing is done using next-gen sequencing. So we can do high throughput samples of um, RNA. And there are common steps in the RNA sequencing analysis workflow, which is uh, listed here. So first of all, we have to um, do the processing of reads that are coming from sequencing. So these reads have to be cleaned up and PCR duplicates um, have to be accounted for and removed and the adapters on the ends of reads uh, have to be removed. So all this pre-processing needs to be happening uh, before you can really analyze this data. And then once the reads are cleaned up and ready to go, we do alignment to a reference genome. So this basically tells you um, where the transcript the sequence is coming from in the genome, what genes is that corresponding to. And also you can see what type of variants exist, uh, meaning that where the sequence is not completely similar to the reference genome and there are certain changes in the DNA basis. And then from this, uh, after the alignment, we can get the gene expression quantification. And then from then we can understand what genes are being expressed and at what levels they're being expressed at. So these are all, so this gene expression quantification leads us to the different types of analysis that we can do on this data. So first of all, there's exploratory analysis, which is basically getting the fundamental aspects of the patterns and understanding them across different samples. And we can make basic comparisons and then data mining is how we can separate groups um, of samples by gene expression um, based on the variety of genes that um, exist. And then after that, by using certain uh, machine learning tools, we can do feature selection, which is essentially saying we can select genes that are um, very important in discriminating between different cell samples. And in this case, um, in this course, we looked at how genes could help differentiate between different uh, clinical subtypes of cancer. And also lastly, the classification aspect of uh, machine learning is using uh, PCA in this course, where we can essentially help cluster these samples based on gene expression into their different cancer subtypes. So from the data we get um, after cleaning up the sequencing reads, we get a, a gene expression table that we um, could generate after doing some um, basically quantile normalization, um, those techniques that are mentioned. So essentially we can normalize the reads um, so then they're comparable to each other. So these expression values in the table seen here is of uh, 63 breast cancer cell lines, <clears throat> which are the columns. 
and the rows are the genes. And the gene expression values after normalization and processing is uh, shown here as well. So this is just a snippet of the um, data table. So in this data table, we can see that the genes are in the rows and the columns are the breast cancer cell lines. Uh, however, for the principal component al analysis approach, the PCA, we would actually want to transpose this matrix and have the rows be the samples and the uh, columns be the genes so that we can um, essentially get a set of genes in the columns that help separate our samples and cluster them appropriately. So we'll see that in the next slides and why we want to have genes as columns. And also from this PCA analysis, we can see how um, each gene contributes to the classification of these cancer subtypes to some degree. So I'll go into PCA just a little bit, um, briefly go over this approach. So PCA is essentially a principal component analysis, which is a dimensionality reduction technique that transforms columns in the data set to a concise uh, new set of features. And uh, we're essentially finding a new set of directions or components that explain the maximum variability between samples. So this, these principal components um, are essentially ways to condense the data that we have in, in the columns and represent them on a more lower dimensional space, such as a two dimensional space as shown in the graph there. So we can take many different features and then select these components that help um, explain the variance in most of them. So they can tell us the most information that exists in the data set. And this helps us in clustering um, the data into different samples based on the specific genes that exist. So the steps in PCA are essentially we um, use different uh, weights for each column. That's why we're using genes as the columns and we use different weights and calculate those based on the variance as explained. And um, we do a scaling of columns and there's those type of small steps in between here. And then uh, the principal components are given in a scree plot, which basically shows how um, the level of variance explained by each principal component. So each principal component um, is essentially a linear combination of the columns in the uh, data set. So there's highest to lowest principal components in the percentage of variance they explain. So the first principal component, PC1, uh, would be the most important or most informative principal component um, that gives you information about the data. So here in this um, course, we had an example uh, multiple genes and the sample um, that they corresponded to. And here, um, if we know what clinical subtypes the samples are from, the different cancer subtypes, then we can do a supervised approach to PCA, which is we can label the samples and then uh, we can see what genes most contribute to the classification of those different subtypes. So here we see the graph uh, where PC1, PC2, so principal component one, principal component two um, is shown because principal component one and two are the most uh, inf informative and uh, they capture most of the variance of the data and they help optimally um, separate the clusters. So PC1, it's 53.5% of the data that is explained. So similarly, with PC2, it's what it means. And then in the clusters, each cluster belongs to a specific subtype as shown and labeled. So from here, we can see the arrows, the loading arrows, which show um, where I show how uh, certain groups of genes contribute to the classification of that specific cluster. So there are gene labels um, shown starting with ENSG, and those are the individual genes that contribute to um, classifying those individual clusters. And from the data, we can also 
extract the most, um, the genes that most contribute to clustering of different samples. And so then we can basically take the most 10 most important or 15 most important genes from the data set and say that these genes are more um, indicative of this sample being a certain cancer subtype. So that was basically just a brief overview and review of how RNA sequencing data is uh, analyzed and different approaches such as machine learning can be used. And RNA sequencing gene expression can be used to understand different uh, cell types and understand gene expression profiles better. And we can see how gene expression and certain important genes correspond to certain clinical subtypes of breast cancer. And PCA is an important machine learning approach that can be used to reduce the dimensionality and help easier help easily visualize and better cluster and classify data in an unsupervised unsupervised way where you don't know the labels, you don't know which subtypes exist, or a supervised way where you can initially label these subtypes. So we can understand the most important genes in classifying cell types from PCA. And um, there are other methods to optimize the classification of these um, cell samples into subtypes, uh, which is using random forest algorithms to get um, understand you know, better uh, most important genes in classification and also the k-means algorithm which is using a clustering method to uh, cluster samples together that are most similar. Uh, thank you and I look forward to continuing learning more in this program.